everyone, Steve here. Uh, today, what I wanted to do with you today is go through navigation as it's uh, presented somewhat in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. So they kind of start us down the path of charts, which we're gonna do in a separate video, but we're gonna come in here now and talk about latitude and longitude lines. And uh, honestly, when I'm giving a check ride to somebody at the commercial level talking about this or flight instructor, it's probably one of the weaker areas of just understanding what's going on here. So remember, longitude lines run from the North Pole to the South Pole, and they start at the prime meridian. So if we were to go, if we were to go over here and look at the prime meridian in Greenwich, England, you know, we just keep moving across here. here here's the zero line. 15, 30, all the way around the, the, the earth like so. Now, what's interesting is that there's 24 longitude lines. So with 24 longitude lines, prime meridian all the way back around, every 15 degrees is a time zone. So 24 time zones, 360 divided by, by 24 is 15 or 365 by 15 is 24. So every 15 degrees, you go 15, 30, 45, 60, on around, that's a time zone. So that that's the longitude line. And now on the latitude line, those are the lines that that we would be walking up a ladder. Even though they're latitude lines we tend to remember it real easy if we were walking up a lattice or a ladder so the zero latitude line is the equator then we see we go 15 north 30 north 45 north all the way up to 90 which would be the north pole and then if we went south it'd be 15 south and 30 south and on and on so anytime we see a latitude line say 45 north we are uh, actually, in this case, we would be halfway between the equator and the North Pole. So uh, 45 south would, would be the same. So here's a 45 north right here. We go up here, 45 north. And if we went 75 west, it looks like it's up there, uh, somewhere up in the northeast United States, per se. So the takeaways, latitude lines run horizontal or laterally. Longitude lines run vertically. And, and uh, longitude lines all go through the North Pole and the South Pole. And, of course, latitude lines do not. So uh, they're just north or south of the equator. Here's a depiction showing you that pretty much every 15 degrees of longitude is a time zone. So we move across here. So here's 75 degrees west, eastern time. 90 degrees west starts, I guess it must be a central. And then we go on to 105, which would be mountain. Then on to one, over to 120, which is Pacific. So uh, some funny things when you look at these, uh, one of the things you can look at is like, who would ever think that Reno, Nevada is farther west than Los Angeles? But it is. You can see, you know, the Nevada border here, but L.A. is down here. So Reno, Nevada, farther west than, than Los Angeles. Who would think that? Because we think of it being on the ocean. Anyway, we have the North Pole, True North, which is where Santa lives. And we've got magnetic north that is south. I, I should look it up. I think it's around 1,300 miles south at Prince of Wales Island. That's where magnetic north is. And uh, so we've got magnetic north, which is always shifting, always moving. I don't know how much a year. And then we've also got, got true north right there. All right, now... We have variation. So, oddly enough, there's, a, there's one line of zero variation I'm aware of in the continental United States called the Agonic Line. 
And as you can see, it runs pretty much right here, like so. The only other one I know in the United States is clear out in the Aleutian Islands. There's a zero agonic line there. So all these others are isogonic lines. So if we're east of the agonic line, then all the variation is called westerly variation. If we're west of the agonic line, all the variation is called easterly variation. There's two pretty much known ways to, to navigate when you start to do dead reckoning. First, maybe we'll talk about the fact there's pilotage, there's radio navigation, and there's dead reckoning. Pilotage, for short, is all about looking at landmarks, comparing them against the sectional, and flying along. Um, that's pilotage. Radio navigation could be a VOR, it could be a uh, NDB, it could be um, GPS, considered radio navigation. Or we get into dead reckoning. Dead reckoning is all about time, distance, and heading. And when we're flying, we look from the clock to the map to the ground. Time, distance, heading, clock to map to ground. So there's two ways we can do the dead reckoning. So the United States military, as far as I'm aware, uh, when I was in the Air Force, we, we used, we used uh, one method and didn't really have a name for it. It's just how they called dead reckoning. But the FAA uses another method. But many people use the military way. So let's, let's start with that one first. There's not a right way or a wrong way. But in the military, we would first lay out, put a line on the chart, and that line on the chart, once we drew it out, was called a true course. And from there, we would add or subtract magnetic variation, which came from an isogonic line on a chart. So true course that we measure out with a plotter, plus or minus magnetic variation, then would equal magnetic course. And then magnetic course, or mag course, plus or minus the wind correction angle, well, that would equal, that would equal mag heading. Okay, but then when we did that, when we did mag course plus or minus the wind correction angle, we would have to make sure we were using magnetic winds. And, and the winds uh, typically come to us in true. So we used to use the statement teletype true. So if the winds are at altitude, if the winds are, on, are out, or winds aloft, they're, they're true winds. Winds given on a uh, TAF forecast or on a METAR, those are mag winds. So just remember, this is a point where you have to convert your winds to mag if you're doing it this way. So then the third part of this one is we take magnetic heading plus or minus compass deviation. We go to the airplane, we look at, see what it's there, and then that gives us compass heading. So true course plus or minus magnetic variation equals mag course, and then mag heading plus or minus compass deviation equals compass heading. Now the FAA teaches us a different method. Either method will get you there. So the, so the, the FAA teaches true course plus or minus wind correction angle equals true heading. And then they teach us true heading plus or minus magnetic variation is equal to mag heading. And then mag heading plus or minus compass deviation equals compass heading. Now, Either one of these methods are going to work. If you use the military way, this is this first one, you're going to get magnetic course. If you use the FAA's way, you're going to get true heading. And people have all been taught different ways. So you just want to make sure when you're teaching your student or you're, you're doing it yourself that you know which one of those ways you're using. I prefer the military way because Mag course does a couple things for me. One, mag course is equal to DTK, desired track. So if I'm at a GPS that delivers DTK, I know that, I, that I've got my mag course just from punching in 
uh, I can go in there and say direct K E D J enter enter, and that's my mag course. So DTK and mag course are equal to each other, and what that also gives us then, well, it, it gives us the ability to to fly the correct hemispheric altitude. Where we're talking about, you know, even uh, plus five or odd plus five hundred feet. So hemispheric altitude. So that's a one of the beauties about doing it this way. Now, another nice thing is I could look at it the day before with my student. He, he or she could have their flight plan done to that level. Then they just spin the winds the day they're going. If we do the second method, the FAA method, then what we end up with is true heading, which is not something we really use in general aviation much. And when it comes to, to doing this the night before, there's not much you can do with that the night before. So the reason I'm going through this is a lot of people get confused and they don't even realize that the whiz wheel, the computers, are made both ways. So this whiz wheel here is done the FAA way. You see here they do the true course plus or minus wind correction angle. Then they do the true heading, plus or minus variation, and then mag heading, plus or minus deviation. What I've seen in, in a lot of our flight schools is about 25% of the people have a whiz wheel, a whiz wheel that's done the FAA way. Most of the whiz wheels are done the military way. Um, last of all, if you are using dead reckoning, um, First, we draw a line on the chart, which is what this author in the, in the airplane, or excuse me, in the pilot's handbook for anarchical knowledge did. We draw a line on the chart. We come along with our checkpoints, and then we kind of figure out our times to our checkpoints. And then we go from there. In the Air Force, we did it a lot more precise than that, but I'm not going to bore you with all that. And uh, I think what I've been able to do is just give you a nice overview on the difference between the two methods which is what I wanted to accomplish. Thanks, have a great day.